Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're getting our final review of Immortal from Lorna Shore. We have spent the entire week listening to this album as much as we possibly can to develop our opinions and this review. And we're gonna give it to you right now. Kiwi Fish, you can go first. What's up? Okay, so we listened to this album for one week and it was interesting. It was an interesting experience because I was a little bit harsh last week. After we listened to it, you know, for the first time, I said, oh, this album's a little monotonous. There's, you know, the drums are just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. But this album, I found there are aspects of it that shine through hard enough that make it super interesting. Okay. And before I explain the first part of it, I want to reiterate what we said last week. Um, in regards to CJ, we do not condone anything he allegedly did or any of his actions, any of that at all whatsoever. Any praise given to him at all is based strictly on his vocal performance on this album. That is the only thing we are going to commend him for, if at all. Just getting that out there again, because it had to be said. With that being said, I think the vocals are possibly the highest point of this album. Yeah. Some of the screams and some of the growls on here literally sound inhuman. Yeah. I'm not kidding. <laughs> in the, in uh, Death Portrait, during the breakdown, there's a point where it breaks down the breakdown, as they do on a lot of the songs on this album, and he just does this one growl that I'm not kidding. Every time I heard it, it literally sounded like a monster. Some demonic thing. It's nasty. It's ridiculous. And he does stuff like that so much, and it's really varied as well. It's not like, oh, he just kind of sounds like this one growl. Like, even the yeah. growls are different. All the screams are different. There's just so much. It's quite varied. Exactly. And I think I asked you about this earlier during the week when we were talking a little bit about the albums. I said, what if this album had some clean vocals put into it? Like, what, like given after one entire week, what are your thoughts on that possibility now? Do you think this album would need it? Or do you think it would be more interesting that way, or what? Like, I'm, I, I'm curious. I, I, I don't think it needs it. I think the vocal performance on this album is incredibly strong, and it didn't need anything else. It didn't need a boost. It didn't need anything, any more uh, diversity in the in the quality of the sound or anything like that. There was a lot going on vocally in this album. There's a lot of cool vocal, like I guess tricks he does. Um, like, it's just, it's top notch vocal performance as far as Deathcore goes. It really impressed me in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. Another example is the beginning of Warpath of Disease. He does another weird, inhuman, demonic noise that, I mean, I listen to it and I'm like, how does a person make that noise with their mouth? Like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, maybe, the, maybe there's a cheat. Maybe there's, there's an effect. I mean, I say stuff like that all the time, but I can't think, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's impressive, it's impressive. It, it is truly it's impressive. impressive. And you know, I did think before I brought this up to Vile during the week, I thought about it myself and I said, is this what the album might need to sound less monotonous? But now that I've listened to the album for an entire week, honestly, I agree with you. No, it does not. The vocal performance is perfectly fine on its own. And I think the issue of, oh, where's the melody? <laughs> That comes in a lot of the guitar parts, and that comes in a lot of the symphonic elements. You will hear that so much in every song. Yeah. That's what makes songs like Obsession as catchy as it is. And I noticed that Obsession is like a fan favorite. It is, you know, yeah. I think you told me about a Twitter thread saying, oh, what's your favorite song from the album? And so many people were saying that song, and I listened to it, and I understand why. Yeah. I think that song catches really easily on people. Yeah. And it's a sick song. The thing with Obsession for me, it was a little confusing because <laughs> I'm gonna sound newbie saying this because some of you guys probably know better than I do, but I couldn't tell if I was hearing guitar or synth for, for a lot of the song. Like, it didn't sound like I was hearing strings. Like, normally when there's a stringed instrument, you can hear strings. When it's not strings, you can kind of process of elimination. Maybe it's synth or maybe it's, it's some other keys or something like that. But I couldn't pinpoint what it was because I felt like it was synth, but if it was synth, where's the guitar? Was it subtle in the background? Was it completely absent? I don't know. That was. It, it's a good thing that I couldn't figure that out. Yeah, I think that's like, cool. It adds it, it adds a mysterious element to the music, which is awesome. Another cool thing. Obsession was one of my top songs. Let me just say that before I get into this. Um, one of the things I really loved about that song is how it goes from full blast beats 
to slow beats with rides on the hi-hat. Really cool on that. Then it goes um, slow rides on the hi-hat with double bass and then it goes double time on the hi-hat um, and it just, it, it, the way it kicks in and I don't know man, it, it's hard to explain music in words but the song I felt had like weight to it. You know what I mean? Like it just, weight as in not as in like it's super heavy, which it is heavy, all these songs are heavy, but I just felt like there was just more to that song as far as it's like emotion. Yeah, it's, I think the fact that there's so much packed into every song gives it so much weight to it. Yeah. And that, that's a big part of it. So yeah, like I said, the vocals are fine on their own. I didn't feel like uh, clean vocals was even warranted at all, really. Like that, that you know, it just kind of, that idea, I'm like, you know what, nah, it doesn't feel like, I, I agree with you on that aspect. You wanna know one song that, that started off uh, at the beginning of the week and I was kinda like, meh, kinda average, but then through the week it grew on me, it's probably my favorite song right now. It's King of Deception. Mm, that that song good. starts off brooding, evil, sounds badass, the riffs are great, has great chord progression, but the outro of that song gets me every time because they do this um, this sweeping with the with the double kick going and it just sweeps through the rest through the end of the song, sweeping on the guitars I'm talking about. And then it finishes up the song like that, but in the second half it harmonizes. I don't know if they just doubled it up in the in the post or if they have two guys doing it at the same time. Either way it sounds sweet. Just the way that song ends is is super mint. Now I will say this album, it's like I said last week, oh, it's all monotonous. The album, as like after listening to it for a week, I feel a lot of the songs do have similarities, general, similar, like general stuff to them. Yeah. But when I listened to it last week, super critically, I'm just like, oh, this is all the same. I'm getting bored. But when I listen to it super critically now, it just feels like just a complete package. Because I remember you mentioned to me throughout the week, you said, you know, when I put this album on, I put the first track on, even on shuffle, it's amazing, and then kind of falls off because everything's similar. And I kind of learned early on in the week, I'm like, okay, we listened to it super critically and saw it the way we saw it. A little bit, you know, repetitive. But then when I listened to it as a full package without super, you know, uh, focused on it, it was just a great overall experience. And I think the experience you get with your first track on this album, no matter which one it is, like given your shuffling, is gonna feel that way throughout the whole album if you're not overly focusing on it. Yeah. And I found it interesting that, you know, that kind of popped out to me near the beginning of the week as the week went on, the more I focused, the less I would get annoyed by any repetitiveness. Like that started to go away for me, even well, though I was trying to It almost to sounds like you're kind of saying that this, for you, worked better as almost like background music. But like when you really put your, your attention on it, you tended to maybe get a little bored because things maybe sounded monotonous to you, but when you forgot about that and just kind of let it play, then you started appreciating at, it more. At, yeah, at first it did that. Early on in the weekend did that. I want to say it was around Wednesday, maybe probably Thursday is when I started to focus on the music and not feel that way. Like I could look at it critically and not get annoyed by things quote unquote sounding the same. Like it, it grew on me is wanna, what I'm trying to say. I want to make a comment about the drums real quick because earlier you said something about the drums being kind of uh, repetitive and stuff like that. They kind of seem like that on the surface, but this is one of those albums that if you if you pay do do pay close attention to the drums, you'll hear little things here and there. Um, it's it, again, it's hard to point out examples with timestamps and stuff, but there's one I remember on I think it's Darkest Spawn, but right before the solo of that, like the guitar solo of that song, there's a series of drum rolls he does, like three or four in a row that are all different, and it, it took me a while, like multiple listens before I even caught it. But once I caught it, I was like, oh yeah, when's this this part with the rolls coming up? And it happens, I'm like, oh, it's so freaking nice. It's so nice. Yeah, this these is, little things. This is the, yeah, this is exactly the kind of album that has a lot of the little things that keep jumping out. Like yeah. in This Is Hell, which is one of my favorite tracks for what I'm about to tell you. Yeah. In the chorus, there's this tiny thing that happens, and it's like for half a bar, where you just hear a string section just like go down from like the top of whatever scale. And it's yeah. just so cool, and I, know I notice it every I time, and I love it. And it's yeah. such a small thing, and this is one of those albums where you're gonna notice so many small things like that. Like yeah. honestly, this week, just one week, I don't think is enough to get a scope for everything in the album. There's probably tons of things in this album we didn't even notice, even after one week of listening over and over. It's a lot. Okay, uh, let's rate it then. All right, so this album was 
one of the hardest albums for me to rate because I was so unsure of things throughout the whole week. It literally took me until today, like our day of recording this, to figure out in my head what I'm rating this album. Because it was today where I realized, you know, this album, does it really have any flaws that just make me bugged by it? And the answer is no. This album is sick. Great performances all around. It's great as background music. When you get used to it, it's great when you focus on it. It gets my toe tag, because this album is totally sick. Nice. Um, yeah, when I was listening to this album throughout the week, my this is what my struggle was. I felt like when I listened to the album as a whole, it didn't seem that special. But when I listened to any individual song on its own, they are amazing. Every song on this album is like top notch in its own way. And I mean, I don't know what about it makes it a little less appealing when I hear it just from beginning to end. I'm not sure, but I'm sure that's something I can get over because this album is sick. It gets my toe tag as well. Um, I think that this is a, a, a top-notch Deathcore album. Great performances from everybody all around. And yeah, it was a fun week. I really enjoyed listening to this album. Great album. Deserved for the two toe tags. The two toe tags for Immortal by Lorna Shore. That's it for this video, guys. We rambled on. We want to know your thoughts about this album. So leave your comments down below and let us know what you think. If you agree with our scores or not, let us know. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Check out our Spotify playlist. I'm Bile Self. I'm TV Fish. We'll see you guys on the next video. Keep those heads banging.